Here we are at uh, session three of Unified English Braille and an introduction. We left off last time with part two uh, talking about strong word signs and we're going to continue on today talking about um, strong group signs and some other contractions. This gets a little bit heavy duty because I can't just talk about contractions without going into rules a little bit of course being a transcriber that I am. So we'll t talk about those for um, this session and hopefully we won't be too overwhelmed. There aren't nearly as many rules as in UEB regarding contractions as there were in the old code, but there are some that we have to abide by. The first group that we're going to talk about are strong group signs. Group signs are braille characters that represent groups of letters, and these are the strong ones. So these are the ones that have a dot in the upper part of the cell, the lower part of the cell, the left hand, left hand part of the cell and the right hand part of the cell all at the same time. And we're talking about group signs now, it's not word signs, so when we talk about dots one and six, we mean CH, not child. The other strong group signs are GH, SH, TH, and WH. I call those the H contractions. ED and ER, OU, OW, ST, ING, and AR. A bunch of them. We use the strong group signs wherever their letters they represent occur unless other uh, rules limit their use. So again, we have to be aware of the rules um, so that we know whether we can use or can't use the contractions, which is why I go into the rules a little bit uh, today. So we're going to see these things a lot more than we did before, as I mentioned in the previous video, including words that um, have diphthongs in them, like Arial, or um, Two, two compound words, two small words making a larger word, compound word, anteroom, boredom, we can use the ED, erase, we can use the ER a lot more than we did before. Freedom, oh, there we go, we have an ED there, even though it bridges syllables. Goring, it's, even though it's a diphthong, we can use the ER. Meningitis, we can use the ING. Mistake, we are going to use the ST contraction. So now using ST for mistake is no longer a mistake. Nightingale, edema, that's a diphthong, we can still use the ED there. Predated, notice that it's a prefix, um, bridging a prefix and a, a root word. Again, we're not going by uh, pronunciation of these th uh, contractions, we're going by the letters. So it's going to take a little bit of a mental adjustment, but once you get it, then um, these start making more sense. But for right now, I know they're going to look really weird because we're still trying to pronounce them. So. Uh, just take a break. When, once we break from that, then we'll be a lot better. So here, a few more that are like that. Redistribute, reroute, riflery, and troubled. Notice we don't have BLE anymore. So that frees up the ED, so we can use the ED contraction in that word. One of the rules that limit the use of these uh, contractions is that we do not use the strong group signs for CH, GH, SH, TH, or WH. Uh, those H contractions, or the strong contraction for the T-H-E when the H is aspirated, when you can hear the H. So in words like knighthood, mishandle, mishap, mishear, New Haven, and Shanghai, we're not using the contractions that could have been used otherwise because we are pronouncing the H. Another rule is that we do not use a group sign which would bridge the words which make up an unhyphenated compound word. So um, sometimes it's a double whammy, like cart horse. We are, uh, we're aspirating the H, we, we're sounding it out, but it's also two words making up an unhyphenated compound word. So we definitely do not use the TH in that um, word. Grasshopper, same thing. Insofar, we are not going to use the OF contraction. Kettle drum, those are two words, separate words, made into a compound word. We're not going to use the ED contraction in there. Longhand, another double whammy. Um, we're not using uh, the un it's for, for the unhyphenated compound word rule and also the aspirated H. So longhand, we are not going to use the GH contraction in that word. Northeast, we are not going to use the THE contraction, but notice that we can use the EA contraction. We'll talk, talk about that in just a bit. Pain is painstaking, we're not using the ST contraction, rawhide not using WH, storeroom, not using ER, stronghold, again a double whammy, we're not using GH, and sweetheart, we are not using THE, but 
um, notice we can use, of course, the AR contraction in, in the heart part of the word. When the use of a strong group sign for CH, SH, TH, WH, OU, or ST would be misread as a word, braille the letters individually. Notice those are all the contractions that, that can be either word signs or group signs, and so if they could be mistaken for a word sign, when we want them to mean a group sign, we have to spell them out. So streets, um, we would not use the ST contraction as we did before in the old code because notice according to UEB rules, that's standing alone and that means that it would be read as the, the whole word still. We don't want that so we have to spell out ST. The same thing for chapter. CH would have been standing alone because of the, um, spaces on either side, the capital letter and the period uh, not withstanding. So it would be read as child, not CH. We don't want that, so we have to spell out CH. And just a side note, um, kind of got stuck in with all these rules, use the group strong group sign for ING wherever the letters it represents occur except at the beginning of a word. That's pretty much what we had before. We couldn't use ing at the beginning of a word. We have to use in and then a separate g. A basic rule for, um, for all of the group signs is that in general, if a group sign bridges a prefix or a suffix and the main word, we um, can use it unless its use would hinder the recognition or pronunciation of the word. Who gets to decide whether it's hindering the recognition or pronunciation of a word? I don't know. But um, do your best, <laughs> is all I can say. There are uh, There is a list of words in the back of the UEB rule book, which you want to become familiar with. It deals with all of the words that are in this section, section 10. And it shows you um, whether you can or cannot use the contractions. So for the most part, though, we can use these words, again, a lot more than we did before. In particular, um, use the group signs for ED, EN, ER, and OF, and ST. So we're specifically being told to use those um, as much as possible, as long as it's not violating some other rule. So we're going to, again, see those much more than we did before. Generally, we use a group sign that bridges a diphthong, as I showed in some previous examples, and an adjoining letter unless the diphthong is printed as a ligature, unless they are, the letters are physically um, joined together in print, which is a rare thing, but it does happen. So if they're just spelled out, like an aerobic, A-E-R-O-B-I-C, the A and E are not joined up in print, they're just separate letters, we can use the E-R contraction in that word. Same th for diureses, encyclopedia, fairy, phoenix, and subpoena. The next group of uh, lower word signs that we're going to talk about are be, were, his, was. These are special four. We can use these when standing alone. However, um, they are not to be in contact with any kind of punctuation that has only lower dots. The hyphen and dash are punctuation with only lower dots, so we can't use those four words um, in conjunction with a hyphen or a dash. Basically, we can only use them when there are spaces around. So um, another uh, limitation is that we do not use them when they are in contact with any kind of quotation mark. UEB has a qu quite a, slur a slew of um, various quotation marks. We're, we're not going to talk about that today. But just be aware that some of those quotation marks have upper dots. But when we're talking about the use of contractions, we're considering that all quotation marks have only lower dots. So if they're in contact with any kind of quotation mark, we cannot use be, were, his, or was. Capital indicators do not affect this rule. So even if you have a quotation mark, a, a capital indicator, and then one of these four lower word signs, we cannot use them because they're essentially next to a quotation mark, and we cannot, um, we have to uncontract the words in those situations. So here are a few examples straight from the rule book. He is or was, so we have was, there was is between, in be, between uh, punctuation marks, these brackets, but they have upper dots, so it's okay to use the was contraction in there. Then we have a semicolon, which is one of those, um, a, a punctuation mark that has only lower dots, but there's a bracket in between, so it's okay. 
to use the was contraction and there are spaces on either side so essentially the was is standing alone we can go ahead and use um, that contraction the same thing then for were we have it, it would it be next to a period <coughs> if those brackets weren't there and then we could not use the um, whole the entire lower word sign for where we'd have to spell it out using the ER contraction instead. But since it, we have the intervening brackets and those have upper dots, we can use the entire lower word sign for were. And then there are spaces on either side of that, so it's essentially standing alone, so we can go ahead and use that contraction. Would be actor, however, be uh, is next to a hyphen, so we cannot use the contraction for that. Then the next example shows some of the funky usage of um, the quotation marks. We're not, again, we're not going to talk about that today, just for the sake of example, though I wanted to show you that um, his, the first his there, we cannot use it because the contraction because it's next to a quotation mark. The, the capital indicator does not make any difference. Then the next his is between two um, double quotes that are used as inner quotes and UEP represents that as it's having a two cell quotation mark there as you see and it has upper dots in actuality but for the sake of the UEP rules we're considering all quotation marks to not to only have uh, lower dots and so even though they have physical upper dots they're considered quotation marks and we cannot use the, the contraction for his in that situation Special rule for enough, we can use it when standing alone. Capital indicators do not affect usage, and the word enoughs uses the contraction. Some weird little thing to, re to remember. In, we can use, or in, we, no, in, I, um, this, we're talking about word signs now, so we're talking about in, not, not in. So lower word signs. Uh, we can use the in contraction wherever it occurs, provided it is in contact with an upper dot. It is not used when in contact with any quotation mark. Capital indicators do not affect usage. So we will see it now with things like mother-in-law, where we did not see it before, because according to the rule that rules in the UEB, we have um, hyphens on either side of it. Therefore, in is standing alone, and we can use the contraction in that hyphenated word. In any case, we cannot use it because the capital indicator notwithstanding is next to a quotation mark and therefore we cannot use the contraction for in in that case. <laughs> the next group of uh, lower group signs that we're going to be talking about are B, well I should say B-E, C-O-N, and D-I-S. We can use those three when they represent the first syllable of a word they must be followed by a letter of some kind, a letter, a contraction, a modified letter, which is what UEB calls an accented letter, or a ligature letter. So a, liter a letter of some kind, an indicator, or um, a punctuation mark, anything else, it means that it's not followed by a letter, so we can't use it. The beginning of a word, UEB defines that as having being a letter sequence which follows a space, hyphen or dash, and it may be preceded by punctuation or indicator symbols, such as italics or a capital indicator. These lower group signs um, are not used when they're followed by a capital indicator or a terminator because they're not um, then at the beginning of a word anymore. So if we have discord and C-O-R-D is capitalized, that breaks the word so we cannot use the D-I-S contraction or the other way around. If um, dis and dislike is capitalized, again, it's not um, followed by a letter anymore. It's not, the, not at the beginning of a word, so we can't use the D-I-S contraction in that case. We can use B-E-C-O-N or D-I-S in an abbreviation when they're used in the unabbreviated form of the word. So if, if they would be used in the full word, um, then they can still be used in the uh, abbreviation if there's at least one other letter after it, because otherwise it's just kind of hanging out there in space. It's not at the beginning of a word anymore. So if we have C-O-N-N for Connecticut, we can use the C-O-N contraction. C-O-N-T for continued, we can use the C-O-N. 
and district, as long as there's that T afterwards, we can use the DIS in that abbreviation. Okay, moving on to some more lo lower group signs, the EA, BB, CC, FF, and GG contractions. Again, just because we've lost DD doesn't mean we've lost the rest of the double letter um, contractions, the lower group signs. So we use these lower group signs when um, they're preceded and followed by a letter of some kind. So that means they need to, need to be followed by a letter, a contraction, a modified, that means accented letter, or a ligature letter unless other rules limit its use. So again, these need to be surrounded by letters, anything else, and they cannot be used. And just another side note that these signs may represent punctuation signs. I'm not sure why UEB thought that was important to point out, but it, they did, so I'm pointing it out to you. So once again, we are going to see these contractions more than we did before. And there are some rules about why we're going to see them in these rules, but I just want you to see them so that you kind of get used to seeing um, these contractions where you probably didn't before. So we have words like acreage, agreeable, again, we don't have BLE anymore, um, but we'll, I'll, but at the same time, we're going to see the EA contraction more, so we haven't lost that much space. And we'll see that EA, BLE combination quite a bit, actually. So acreage, agreeable, bubble, again, we can't use BLE in this word, but the BB then is now freed. So some words are going to look very, very strange to us, um, for a while. Same thing with creation. We don't have A-T-I-O-N anymore, so that frees up the E-A contraction, and then we use the T-I-O-N contraction. Very different. <coughs> Doggone, we can use the G-G contraction, genealogy, likable, there's that E-A-B-L-E con combination again. Lineage, it's just like acreage over on the um, other <laughs> column. Moth-eaten, we can use the E-A contraction there. We'll get to that rule in a bit. Northeast, peon, I think is how you say that, peaceable, there's that E-A-B-L-E contraction, or combination again. <clears throat> really is going to look really strange because we don't have A-L-L-Y anymore, but now we have E-A, and speakeasy, we have that now. And then we have the buts. Um, UEB is fond of listing exceptions without telling you why, so just be aware that um, just because we can use the, some contractions more than we did before doesn't mean we use them wherever they appear, whenever we want. There are limitations, so please be aware of the, those rules before you start trying to um, transcribe or teach in Braille. Otherwise, you're going to be presenting something incorrectly. So there are some exceptions. Arc cosine, that's a compound word, so we're not going to use the CC contraction there. Back canal, I think is how you say that. Um, the the CH contraction wins over CC. Beatrice, B East wins over EA. Leander, A and D wins over EA. Mahjong, we, we uh, can't use the GG contraction because it's at the end of a word. Pineapple is a compound word, so we're not going to use EA. And sub-basement, same thing, it's just compound word, not using BB. Use the lower group sign for EA, BB, CC, FF, or GG at the end of a word when a suffix is added to the word and when it is the first word in an unhyphenated compound word. So this goes back to that list um, just two screens back where I said we'll be talking about this. So this is one of those rules where um, we can use the EA contraction and other con lower group signs more than we did before when suffixes are added. So area way, we, we would not normally be able to use the EA contraction after area because it's at the end of a word, but now that it's in area way, now the EA contraction is between two letters and so we can go ahead and use the um, contraction for that. Same thing for eggplant, we would not normally use the GG after egg, but now that's between two letters with an eggplant, we can use it. Seaman, stiffly, we've added a suffix. Ebbing, we've added a suffix. Ideas, again, uh, we made it plural seashore and tea time. 
However, do not use EA, BB, CC, FF, or GG when preceded or followed by capitals, indicator, or terminator. Again, those things are not letters, therefore we cannot use the contraction for, um, in those cases. So if we have cliff side and side is capitalized, we cannot use the FF. Egghead, if H is in the head is capitalized, we can't use GG. Mac Eakin, I don't know how you say that name. Um, again, those are capital indicators. We cannot use EA. SeaWorld has a capital indicator, can't use the EA. And um, Teaspoon, were t that's the um, indicator for ca terminating capital capitals mode. And so um, that's not a letter. We can't use the EA contraction in that case because it's not ne next to a letter, it's next to an indicator. One more special thing about EA, we do not use the EA contraction when it bridges a prefix and a word. When it's a suffix and a word, it's okay, but we're not a prefix. So deactivate G anticline, I have no idea what that is. Preamble and reaction, they all spell out EA because those are all prefixes added to a, um, a root word. EN and IN have special rules. We use them wherever they occur, unless there's something else that says we can't. So again, we're going to see these much more than we did before. We will see them in words like antinode, binomial, denote, enormous, equinox, ins, meaning in apostrophe s, into, we don't have the into contraction joined up with anything, but that doesn't mean we can't still use the IN contraction. Mayned, I, I don't know what that is or how you say it. Montenegro and Phoenix prenatal renew. So those will look a little strange to us until we get used to this, but we can use the EN and IN contractions in those cases. And here's a but page. And um, I'll just read them. Athens, we're not using EN, we're using THE because it, THE is strong and it wins. Business, not using the IN contraction there. Fenced, not using EN there. Forenoon, EN, we're not using it because it's a compound word there. Lament, not using EN because M-E-N-T wins. Benign, not using EN because B-E wins. Cringed, not using IN, I-N-G wins. File name, not using EN across um, two words of a compound name. Francine, we're not using EN. It would take up too much space, so we're using A and C instead and toenail bridges compound words, so we're not using EN. Do not use the lower group sign for EN when it's standing alone. So if EN means EN, we're not going to use it um, when it's standing alone because otherwise, of course, it would be read as the whole word sign, not the group sign. We would, it would be read as the word sign enough. So if it means the group sign EN, we're going to have to spell it out so that to avoid that confusion. So en route, en route, however you say it in your area, <laughs> is um, we spell out EN. <coughs> and then there are some overarching uh, lower sign rules. Using, use the lower word signs for enough and in, or any of the lower group signs with lower sign punctuation provided they are in contact with an upper dot and no other rules limit their use. So um, some, a lower group sign can be in contact with an upper dot, that's fine, but if there's some other rule that um, goes along with it, that supersedes this overarching rule. Un uncontract the final group sign if there's no upper dot, that's the same as we did before. And any type of quotation mark is considered to have only lower dots. So repeating that rule again. And just for the record, when we talk about type forms later on, like italics, those have upper dots and, and those count as having upper dots, even though they're only indicators and not present in print. So there you have it. That's a, a basic rundown of the um, lower word signs and lower group signs. And we also talked about some strong group signs. Give it a shot, try some practice um, with the accompanying uh, drill that is uh, provided with this session. And I hope I see you in session four. Thank you.